Try some. This is James, aka JP Harker, coming to you with another video. This is just a short TBR video for today. I'm going to look at some of the stuff that I'm looking at at the moment. First off, we have John Le Carre's Silverview. I haven't started this one yet, so I know almost nothing about it. I'll give a quick look. Uh, Julian Lounsey has renounced his high flying job in the city for a simpler life running a bookshop. But only a couple of months into his new career, Julian's evening is disrupted by a visitor. A Polish emigre living in Silverview, the big house at the edge of town, seems to know a lot about Julian's family. When a letter turns up at the door of a spy chief in London, warning him of a dangerous leak, the investigations lead him to this quiet town by the sea. A mesmerizing story of an encounter between innocence and experience, and between public duty and private morals. We'll see. I have, I'm sure I used this expression about Neil Gaiman, I have a mixed feeling when it comes to John Le Carre, because some of his stuff I've absolutely loved, and some of his stuff I've just found boring. And it's, it's terrible, I don't know what it is. Because one of my favorite books, certainly my favorite spy book, is The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. I absolutely love that book. I really loved uh, most of the George Smiley ones. Uh, there's Murder of Quality and Smiley's People. So got these the wrong way around. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Honorable Schoolboy was pretty good. And so those ones, really, really liked them. The Night Manager, even though I really liked the TV series, couldn't stand the book. I just couldn't get on board with any of the characters. And I had a similar thing with um, the Constant Gardener. So I don't know what it is. Sometimes a Le Carre book will just grab hold of me, and sometimes I just can't get into it. So we'll have to see where we go with Silver View. But I shall keep you all posted, I am sure. Next up, you can tell from the numerous marks here that I have started this one, and that is Owain Glyndwr, The Story of the Last Prince of Wales, by Terry Braverton. I'm only a little way into this, but I am absolutely loving it. I know a little bit about this period in history, but I've made so many copious notes of the things I didn't know. Uh, a little gruesome detail I'll throw in is that the punishment of hanging, drawing, and quartering was specifically invented for a Welshman. It was Edward I, that bloodthirsty man of illegitimate parentage, who decided to devise it for a Prince David to send a message to the rest of us, and it became the punishment for high treason. But it was invented for us, and that makes us feel special. A lot of detail about Oanglindur himself in the early days, might not have been a rebel at heart from early on. He might have been and just been keeping it hidden. It's uncertain whether the personal beef over land is what kicked off this rebellious streak, or if that was always in him. Don't know. But what happened and how it's going, and some of the background, is absolutely fascinating. So I may do a bit of a deep dive into this once I've finished it. I'll recommend this from what I've read so far. And the last one is an ultimate recommendation. And it's this. And it's large. And it's brilliant. It is Caiaphas Cain, Hero of the Imperium, by Sandy Mitchell. I've read this book three times already. I have a huge TBR that I should be getting on with. And I saw it, and I picked it up, and I thought, oh, I'll maybe glance at it. I mean, it's an omnibus of three books. Maybe I'll just read one of them. That's not going to happen, Jim. I'm definitely going to read all of them again, because I get so absorbed into it. Caiaphas Kane. he is, according to the author, based on a mix of Harry Flashman and Edmund Blackadder. I'd say it's quite heavy on the Flashman, especially given the way the story is set out. In terms of personality, there's a bit more an even mix between Harry Flashman and Evan Blackadder. But in terms of the way the story is set out, it's very Flashman. For those who don't know the Flashman stories, it's a fictional character who 
is a terrible coward and a unscrupulous cad who keeps accidentally finding himself in dangerous situations and walking away as the only survivor and people assuming he's the hero. And Flashman was very good. I've read those. And uh, set into the 19th century, so he's there at the uh, retreat through Afghanistan. And he's there at Little Bighorn, and he's there at, I think, Isant Luana. Yeah, Isant Luana, not Rock's Drift. And keeps accidentally walking away with a heroic reputation. And Caiaphas Kane is an Imperial Commissar in the 40k universe, doing pretty much the same thing. He keeps accidentally, when trying to run away from somewhere, he runs into the secret flanking attack and accidentally scatters them. And there's a huge brawl in a mess hall where it's getting to the point where people are killing one another, and he freezes with fear, unable to go anywhere, and people assume he's standing up to everyone and staring them down. And it's wonderful. I think the main difference between Caiaphas and Flashman is that Flashman is completely without morals. There's almost nothing redeemable about him. Whereas Cain, there's mostly no morals, and he's mostly irredeemable. But there are occasional flashes where he's genuinely loyal to somebody, and it's lovely to see those moments. Yes, such a fun book for such a grim universe. So many laughs to be had from this. So... If you have either any interest in the 40k universe, or if you just like a fun book with a little sci-fi in it, Caiaphas Kane, Hero of the Imperium, strongly recommend. Alright, that's a bit shorter than my last video, but I will be sure to keep posted with how these things go, and I will round it off there for now. This is James, aka JP Harker. Oil Valley.